Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller, the podcast. I'm joined by Seth. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for finding us on uh, on, the, on the internet. Now, these shows originally aired on Brookings Radio, but now they're all here for your enjoyment. I hope you like it. There you go. Sit back, enjoy the show, relax. Uh, let us know if you want to see anything on future shows. As we said, the, this comes out live in the Brookings area, but enjoy this archive episode. Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Welcome to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. The South Dakota Festival of Books is happening in Brookings this week. One of the featured authors is Jeff Allworth, author of The Beer Bible, an excellent reference on world and craft beer. So we're talking beer books this week. Allworth of Portland, Oregon, got his start writing about beer in the late 90s as a newspaper columnist. He now writes a blog, is a regular contributor to All About Beer magazine, and is working on his third book. I came to Portland in uh, 1986 to go to college. And that was the year that the third brewery, Portland Brewing, opened in Portland. Um, two others opened in, in 84 and 85. And uh, so I was here right kind of at the start of the whole craft beer thing. And as I entered adulthood, I, I was starting to get interested in craft beer and, and the local scene. So by the time this job opened up, I was very much a fan. Allworth will be giving a couple of presentations in Brookings and is taking part in a third assisting with a literary lunch Friday at noon on the science of food and drink. His main presentation that day, a ticketed event at the South Dakota Ag Museum, a guided tasting of British, Belgian, and German ales, and that'll include comparing those imports to an American IPA. I will be talking about those different features that characterize different national traditions and will taste the beer and... I can match some of the flavors that are coming out of the beer with those particular processes that each country employs to make them. We will uh, do an American IPA so we can see how different those are. And I think I, I will do that one last. It demonstrates by, by comparison how weird the American palate is. A Saturday event is free, set for 3 o'clock at the Old Sanctuary. Learning the secrets of the world's master brewers ties into the book he's just completed. A book that grew out of the Beer Bible when I would come back from my travels in Europe and talk to homebrewers, I would point out that people in Germany and Belgium and Great Britain and the Czech Republic especially brewed differently than the way Americans do, and particularly American homebrewers. And so I would tell them weird quirks of these countries, and they would always be fascinated. And it occurred to me that it would be cool to write a book where we give homebrewers instructions about the way these other countries brew beer. So I went back to those breweries that I'd visited and had them give me a, a five-gallon batch of beer and a recipe and then talk about how they would brew that beer. And so that's what the book is. Um, it's a homebrew book, but I don't pre present myself as a great authority on homebrew. I, I'm kind of the midwife between these amazing uh, master brewers all over the world and homebrewers here in the United States. America does not have the brewing history or traditions found in Europe, but Allwer says American brewers are changing the way beer is brewed around the world. He says brewing traditions had frozen with the advent of the Industrial Revolution and nothing really new had happened since the 1840s. That is until the American craft beer revolution. We started making IPAs, hoppy beers. It took uh, nearly 30 years for this development to happen. But we, we started making these beers in a way that breweries have never made beers in, in the history of brewing. The way we use hops, the varieties of hops we use are, are part of the guiding light because American hops are very intense and have uh, really particular flavors. So brewers wanted to figure out how to use those in their beers. And one of the things they wanted was not just bitterness, but these rich flavors and aromas. Sometimes you smell an IPA and it smells like fruit juice, which is why you're seeing things like grapefruit IPAs out now. The way you do that is you add hops at the very end of the brewing process, the boiling process, and then even later, while the beer is in a, after fermentation was, in a conditioning tank, in IPAs now, the vast majority of the hop content will go very late in the boil, and nobody's ever made beer that way. So that's actually one of my favorite things about brewing. The United States, of all places, is now like the, the, the driving force in, in beer, and we've invented this new way of beer. For more info on any of the Festival of Books events, check out the schedule online. Just search South Dakota Festival of Books. More when Beer Untapped continues in a moment. Ça sent la bière de Londres à Berlin. Ça sent la bière. Welcome back to Beer Untapped with Perry Miller this week. 
The South Dakota Festival of Books is in Brookings, and one of the featured authors is noted beer writer Jeff Allworth. One last story from him that I love on the changes wrought in worldwide brewing because of the American IPA. When I was in the Czech Republic in Prague, they have all these different names for beers that we don't really know about. We know about Pilsner is the word we know, but um, they have Stedley Nashox and Palosamaves and Chernes and these weird things. And I boned up because I wanted to, you know, pretend I, I knew what I was talking about. And I was hanging out with um, a brewer there, and he said, yeah, but ha- have you tried our IPAs? And I thought, oh, man, I thought I knew everything. I never heard of this IPA thing. And then he pointed at the chalkboard, and it was IPA, of course. <laughs> so he uh, he was making an American IPA, and he was really proud of it. And uh, I found that, you know, uh, American IPAs are now being brewed in, in England and in London, where, you know, they, they came from. And uh, Stone has set up a brewery in Berlin, and you find it in Mexico City, and... Uh, Copenhagen and everywhere. Jeff Allworth's beer, Bible, a favorite of mine, but there are many great beer books out there. Seth Cook of Woodlegs Brewing in Brookings. I still have a pile of beer books uh, at the house. You know, they've some of them have been now purchased over on digital versions, but uh, some of my favorite books are still in paperback. One of my favorite books, and this is, this is probably down the nerdy row, is Ray Daniels is the author, and he does he'd made a book called Designing Great Beers, and it's probably in my opinion, one of the authoritative works on actual recipe formulation. So he has he goes through some of the basics of what the brewing process is, but this book is really designed for people that want to design their own beer recipes. Another of my favorites, Tasting Beer by Randy Mosher. And that's used actually as a primer for a lot of beer courses. So everything from the um, from the Cicerone to even the Siebel or other, Randy Mosher did a really good job just putting it down. And this is a great book on to understand the styles. It's a fantastic reference book for those that you may have forgot some of it, but it's a, it's a pretty good read too if you just want to go through it. Yeah. It's, it's really more formulated for people that are just building an understanding of it. Other notable beer books, the Oxford Companion to Beer and the Brewmaster's Table, both by Garrett Oliver, and virtually anything written by the pioneer, the great British beer writer Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, in his travels through Europe, became probably the, the account of record for a lot of these beer styles. The first time they were really explored and, and analytically analyzed, not just regionally appreciated, but sat down and, 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 and went through and organized his thoughts. And there are some that believe that some of the styles that he created a record of may have been forgotten if he, if he wants to have done it. Any of his books are worth seeking out. Finally today, let's head to the Brookings Liquor Store, find out what's new on tap from beer guide Drew Eklund. From Zipline, it's their double IPA, 20 cents an ounce, very highly rated, excellent IPA. It's well balanced with the malt hitting first, followed by the citrus and pine hoppiness. It hides the 8.5% ABV very well, so... Check that one out. The next one I have is from Watertown Brewing Company. It's Coddington Cream Ale. Uh, The first beer we've had from them. 16 cents an ounce. Um, It's light, refreshing, and well-carbonated. Slightly sweet, easily drinkable. This would be a nice beer to enjoy outside during these last few weeks of warmer weather. The next one I have is from Sick and Twisted. It's called Wild Ride Wheat. 16 cents an ounce. Um, This unfiltered wheat ale combines ripe citrus with uh, honey undertones, mild bitter finish with floral and pepper notes. So there you go. A couple of South Dakota beers and a Nebraska beer on tap, among others. New package beer includes some pumpkin seasonals, Funky Pumpkin from Boulevard, Headless Heron from Central Waters, Pump Kick from New Belgium. Check them out. That's it for this week's show. Until next time, crack a good IPA and drink local and drink responsibly. Thank you for listening to this archived edition of Beer Untapped with Perry Miller. Feel free to listen to other episodes. And if there's anything you'd like us to talk about on a future show, please let us know. Thanks again.